We are chatting with Tim Gunn today on the Brett Allen Show. Back for a second time. Very excited to talk about Making the Cut Season 3 on Amazon Prime. Tim, thank you for your time. Brett, thank you for yours and thank you for your loyalty. 100%. Well, I'm a fan and have been for a very long time going back to the project Runway Days. Mm -hmm. Um, I was chatting with my former roommate slash landlord yesterday and she wanted me to tell you that you are her hero. She watches reruns all day long oh. and very kind and excited for this season three with you and Heidi. This is very exciting because uh, you are back for yet another season. Uh, and I, I was going to ask the question about when you're doing a show like this, how do you keep things fresh and new, but you all have seemed to crack the code and it's very literally fashion forward, socially forward. How exciting is it to have this going on again for a third time? It's absolutely surreal, Brett, to be honest. And it's a thrill. And Heidi and I love working with Prime Video and Amazon and Amazon Fashion. I mean, the whole idea or the whole notion that the show is shoppable is simply something I'm, I still have difficulty wrapping my brain around, even though we're going into season three. Um, and everybody involved in this project is just stellar and phenomenal and i feel extremely lucky to be working with them um oh and by the way thank thank your friend and and former landlord for her kind words absolutely yeah now that's interesting that the idea is shoppable i know a few years ago when instagram and even before tiktok sort of took off and became what it is now you were able to go on to an influencer's page or whatever the case might be and click links and it would take you to the things that they're wearing. But now we're, we're watching live television and people can actually shop the show. Like that, does that take a lot of effort and a lot of planning to sort of figure that out and engineer it to make it easy for people to be able to do that? It's almost paralyzingly difficult. Yes, it really is, because we have to plan very far in advance. Um, Amazon has all the metrics. I certainly don't. But they know who's buying what where, and, and they know what the various proclivities are in terms of what people want to buy. And they're able to anticipate that. And I'm very happy and proud to say that every item we've ever put up for sale has sold out, um, certainly with, within a couple of days. And um, it, it's it's exciting that the audience has this fervor to get these clothes and actually wear them. I mean, I I was out on the street and saw someone. This is in in the uh, last fall um, wearing Gary Graham's denim jacket, and uh, it's very exciting. Yeah, I can imagine it would it would be because um, just in the fact that you can sort of have this prepared for people uh, and have them wear them i think is very cool you have some great judges this year i know nicole ritchie is one uh mm. how is it working with her because i think she's very smart and and she's funny too <laughs> you know the the humor was uh, nicole's humor was something i i hadn't anticipated but i learned about it in season one because she was with us um she is so extremely thoughtful and so considerate um, in her remarks, and so e extremely respectful of the designers. Um, at the same time, she's a truth teller, yeah. but she does it with with a huge dose of diplomacy and tact. And it's why the designers respond so so well to her. And then we have Jeremy Scott, who's has a very different personality, but equally thoughtful and diplomatic and considerate. It's it's um, we're very very lucky because with. I mean, I'll say this about Jeremy and Nicole, since they're both designers. Um, with designers, so often the designer wants to tell, um, the, the judge designer wants to tell the contestant designer what he or she would have done if this had been their assignment. Well, it's totally irrelevant. And Nicole and Jeremy never, ever, ever cross that line, I'm very happy okay. to say. They, they, know it's, they know it's not appropriate, but it's hard. When you have new judges in particular, you don't know really what you're going to get. And you cross your fingers and hope that you're going to get wonderful, wonderful people, which which we certainly have. 
Yeah, yeah. I just know watching in past seasons, it's fun to watch all of this. And I mean, everybody uh, wants to look nice and dress nice. I, I was going back and listening to our conversation from a couple of years ago. And I know we had joked about buying, you know, $300 pairs of sweatpants and all of this crazy stuff. Yeah. 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 And how silly it is, but you can look nice and wear clothes that are sensible, you know, versus, you know, buying something that is just outrageously expensive. Uh, and it's crazy. Be ruined. I, I mean, it's really, it's insane. And it's primarily the European designer brands that slap their logo on a, a, a rubber soccer slide and the price goes from $45 to $750. Yeah. Who's crazy enough to spend that kind of money? I'm always saying, look, buy something that's reasonably priced and give the balance of what you might have spent to a charitable cause. Do something good for the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> I always enjoy your perspectives on those types of things. And it's true. You know, it's like a name seems to go a long way. This show, I mean, you have a lot of great contestants this year as well. I was going you through do. the list of the people that you have chosen. I don't think we got to talk about this the last time, but how do people get to this place to be on the show? Do you have a team that goes out and looks for contestants? Do they apply to the show like a lot of these types of reality programs? H how does that all work? I think our listeners would find that fascinating. We we do. We have a great team that, that reaches out. Um, the most difficult season to cast was, of course, season one, because people didn't know who we are or what we were. Um, and we didn't even dangle the incredible prizes of the win in front of, of um, potential contestants. We, we didn't let them know until they were actually with Heidi and me live on camera doing the show. Um, so now that people know about the million dollars and the Amazon fashion mentorship and the fact that they have a storefront and on Amazon fashion um, and the fact that it's not just the winner who wins, whoever wins the assignment of the week has their garment reproduced by Amazon and wow. they receive all the profits. Um, I, they meaning the designer. And so now there's a, a, a serious, uh, enthusiasm and almost a fervor. Right? Well, I think it's not even almost a fervor um, for people to get on the show. And I have to say about season three, that group is the strongest group of designers we've had. And it's because they've seen the show. They know yeah. what it's going to take and they know how serious this is. So it's it's um, very rewarding to know that or to be able to anticipate that with each successive season and fingers crossed, we have another um, that with each successive season, we have stronger and stronger designers because there can be a, a thought process that says, oh, well, you had the best in the beginning and now you have the uh, the diluted version. Well, in right. fact, that isn't the case. And it's it, as I said, it's very rewarding. Yeah, I can imagine for you and Heidi and the judges and for the talent comes on the show i mean i would even say at least from my perspective even to like make it to that platform even let's say they only make it a couple episodes that's still a pretty big platform for them to be on and maybe get more recognition than they might have had previously before coming on the show well can i share something with you well i will share something with you that i've never said publicly um, and I certainly haven't said on the show because it just doesn't have an appropriate place to fit. The designers who leave early have, they share a common denominator and I'll tell you what it is. It's stubbornness. Yeah. It's an, it's an, an unwillingness to process critical feedback and assimilate it. Mm -hmm. So they're, they, 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 they come to the show with a very certain, way of working a very particular point of view the point of view i'm all in favor of i mean that's who they are but if they're unreceptive to any feedback and i'm not talking about me though partially me but primarily the judges the judges get irked yeah um they just say why are we wasting our time with you so those are the people who leave early those who assimilate and those who morph and evolve um and for the, the designers who 
end up being, let's say, the last half of, of the designers from the beginning, there's a tremendous evolution in them. And it's exciting and thrilling to bear witness to that. So it really does take that to, to come to, to making the cut and say, well, I am who I am and I'm not straying from this person. Well, certain aspects of that are fine, but other aspects are not so fine. Wow. There you have it, folks. We have an exclusive about. Yeah, that's the one thing I've always found fascinating about shows like this and other types of reality types of shows. Although I think this is probably one of the types in the most purest form because they're competing. But, you know, it's not like a variety show or a talent show like there are millions of out there to watch nothing negative. But I mean, you really have to work hard. And, you know, when you're on a national platform, you know, 200 and some plus countries, plus the United States and everywhere else, if you that's a good life lesson. Like if you can't adapt to mm -hmm. feedback and criticism, it's hard to be successful, you know, especially in a situation like that, because I'm sure there's a lot that we don't see um, that doesn't make it onto television, perhaps. There's a ton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm always saying to to the other producers, I could never edit this show. If I yeah. if I were in charge of editing the show, it would run twenty four seven. Yeah, it's like Shark Tank. I've I've heard like some of those deals take hours, you know, and you don't even see a third of that. You know, you see a yeah. ten minute pitch. Um, and either well, they it, get a deal or it, they don't. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's not unlike my um, Tim talks, my workroom rounds. Yeah. I'm with the designers. Oh, it can run ten to twenty minutes each, and it looks like I'm in and out of there in thirty seconds. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because I'm like, wow, he's giving really sage advice <laughs> in a very short time. No, it's it it's it's long and laborious, <laughs> and I love it. I mean, I it's it's what I do. I'm 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 honored to have the role, um, and I take it very very seriously. But it takes a, takes a while, and also I'm pummeling the designers, each designer, with questions because I need to have a, a context before I even respond. I can't just walk up and say, "Gee, this is a load of garbage." Only to hear the designer say, well, thank you. That's what my my goal was. <laughs> it's funny so I have that, to ask, what are you trying to achieve here? That's funny. It reminds me of an older episode of Project Runway that I was watching with my old uh, roommate landlord before I moved. I, I couldn't tell you the season or the episode, but they had to make prom dresses, I think, essentially is what the task was. And they were making them some out of like, I don't want to say tin foil, but they were trying to create these prom dresses. And there was one that looked like it was like out of the nineties or something like that. And just the brutal honesty that you all have with these people. Um, and like, you can just see them like internally melting down, uh, but also appreciating the feedback. I mean, to be able to work with you exclusively would have to be, you know, a once in a lifetime opportunity um, or Heidi or whoever might be assisting in that moment because it doesn't happen often. So I guess the key is to seize the moment, right? I mean, that would be a big message for a lot of these people. It, it, it is the message. You're quite right, Brett. And also we, we have no time. I mean, that's right. why I'm, I say this is why I'm, I need to be a blunt instrument because this is all going to be revealed to the judges tomorrow. It's not next week. Um, so, so time is of the essence and you, the designers have to use their time well and, um, strategically. Yeah. I love it. Well, one last topic here, and we talked about this, uh, before we started recording and running into technical problems. Um, it's been two years since you were here last again. Thank you so much. I think the last time we were just really kind of entering into, uh, our world falling apart and now things are what seem to be normal. Um, how is Tim Gunn adjusting to, are you back at city diner for breakfast in the mornings? I mean, people, they love to know this. Like, are you, are you kind of adjusting well, or where are you kind of at with everything? Well, to be honest, Brad, I'm not adjusting so well. Um, as I said to you earlier, I liked it better when they were hard and fast rules and not all this loose fuzziness. Um, and I am back at City Diner, but I pick up. Um, okay. So I, I order online, pick it up, and and bring it home. Um, I have occasionally met um, friends and neighbors there, but I could count those occasions on one hand. Um, 
And I'm, I'm back at the Metropolitan Museum where I love to be. And I used to go once a week. Now it's more once a month, but I, I'll gradually get there. It's, it's, um, it's been quite a trip for my brain and my emotions, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I, I'm really a very solitary kind of guy and I, I, I like my own company and I like being alone. So there was a certain aspect of the quarantine and um, the, the restrictions that really appealed to me. Um, but enough is enough, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I and I, I will say I'm, I'm double vaxxed and vax, vaccinated and double boost, boosted. Um, and I'm, I feel very lucky that I haven't had COVID. I um, haven't contracted it, but I've also been very, very careful. I was invited to a book event about six weeks ago, and it was my first foray out into a bigger world Oh wow! Uh, with, a lot of, with a lot of people. But there were 300 people crammed into a tiny space. I was there for less than five minutes, and I went to the host and said, I'm sorry, but I'm leaving. And I said, I'm not leaving because I'm afraid of contracting COVID. Bring it on. But I said, I'm leaving because it concerns me that there are 300 people in this tiny space who are all acting as though the last two and a half years didn't happen. Right. And it was just, it was deeply unsettling. I mean, it. how can we forget that? We can't. I agree with you. Yeah, I'm the same double vax boosted. I, you know, sadly, I did contract it um, once. And that was several, a while after. I had taken my son to LA for Christmas and we did the universal studios, all that uh, sort of thing. And yeah. LA County was in masks, even outdoors at the time. And, you know, when you're around that many people and you're doing things, you know, it's kind of like the same mindset. It's like, you know, I know me and trust myself, I'm not here to be political and judge somebody who chooses not to, or to, yeah. or not to whatever, yeah. but you know what I mean? It's like, you can't just pretend like, none of that ever happened you know what i'm saying I know. and it's yeah. like you know come on it's like you had to be tested to get in and you had to provide a vaccination card but even still what's stopping somebody from going in you know that may have it or just doesn't care it's crazy but um i always love your honesty and perspective on things and uh i'm excited for people to see season three of making the cut on amazon prime video uh, and all the fun, uh, I've seen a few sizzle cuts that ensues. So, uh, thank you, Tim, as always for your time. It's always a pleasure. And, and thank you for your graciousness and your time. And Brett, thank you for, for your graciousness and your time. It's always a pleasure for me. And I look forward to our next conversation. Yes, absolutely.